Hello friends. Today we are going to learn how to approach a case with scanty data or where the patient doesn't give much history and you have to collect data from the uh, relatives and still even you uh, they cannot provide you much data. So how to rely on your observation, on all your senses and on all your knowledges and approach a case with deep pathology like a renal failure case and get good results in that. So we will try to learn a new remedy or a sorry lesser known remedy uh, which is prescribed very less in adult cases. So I will invite Dr. Shobha Shah to present her case. Thank you, Anita. Is it visible? Is my screen visible? Yes, yes, yes. So, hello friends. I will directly go to the case. Uh, today I am going to uh, I am going to share two cases. Uh, both the cases has the behavioral problems. Uh, let me start with the first case. Uh, the first case is of a 40 years old male patient. He is unmarried and he is brought to clinic by his younger brother. And he has a chronic chronic kidney disease and a bardet bitter syndrome. Now, his creatinine was 11.26 and hemoglobin is just 7.7. .7. Now, this patient is the one who is talking very, very less and that is why most of the information is given by the brother. Now, um, what the brother said is that this patient was fine till the age of 40 years till around two weeks ago. But around two, week, two weeks ago, he had a fever and during that time, he went to the family doctor and he investigated him and he found out that his serum creatinine was high, his blood pressure was high. So, he was referred to a nephrologist and he was hospitalized. So, under hospitalization, he was again um, diagnosed further and uh, they also, seeing his high creatinine, they gave him three dialysis per week. Even there, his bone marrow biopsy was uh, done and he was diagnosed as an anemia with chronic kidney disease. Now, he also had some skin rashes with itching and he had dark discoloration of the skin, the edema of the ankles since some time before fever. But he, the patient didn't much complain to the family members and that is why he was not consulted uh, by any doctors at that time. Now, if we see the family of this patient, no, then... He lives with his mother and his younger brother. Now, his father expired before 15 years. And when he was small, this patient was not much interested in studies. Now, uh, uh, see the information that I am trying to share with you is given by both the mother and the younger brother. Uh, initially, first I had consulted, uh, uh, meaning first consultation only the younger brother had come with the patient, he brought him. But what is happening is the patient was speaking very less. Even the younger brother who was there, like he was uh, also, he's working. So he is also not in much touch with the brother. So that is why he also could not give a very, uh, very much detailed data about the patient. So then after some time, like that was the time I gave patient one, two, three medicines, but he was not responding very well. So then I had to call the mother. and So now today I am giving you the data which is collected by both mother and uh, the brother. So mother saying that, you know, mother, that this patient was not interested in study since the childhood. And mother had to literally hit him and send him to school. And once he was in the college, then he did his studies very well. And he completed his graduation with an average result. So after graduation, he was working with one CA. But he wasn't given any smart work. He was given the work of just the transferring of some files, etc. And the patient like is of the type that you cannot take up much of the mental pressure job. And his confidence level is also very low. And he doesn't talk very freely with everybody. So he cannot get hired up also easily for the job. During COVID, what had happened is he lost his job. And he had no regret losing his job. So, he because he was just enjoying, you know, being at home, watching TV and just 
he had some uh, pet animals at home, pet cats he had. So he used to just play with them. And he was happy living alone, eating and sleeping. And he is must than himself. Like he has no sense of duty or responsibility that his brother is working and he need to support, work and support his brother. So that is what was the mother's complaint and mother's concern that, you know, he should take up that responsibility, but he's not doing that. And the mother was saying that he really troubles me a lot. Like he's very obstinate, he's disobedient, he doesn't listen. He will do only whatever he wants to do and he will not follow the instruction. He gets angry also if he is contradicted. He gets angry on younger brother if he instructs him something. And otherwise, like it doesn't matter to him that if he is scolded or angered. Or like, you know, even during this uh, clinic, the mother was complaining about the patient. But he was quite okay. Like he had no, there was no much change in the patient's expressions. It didn't matter him much. And so he was almost like a loop at that time. Another thing about him was that this patient, he keeps on cleaning the utensils at home, you know, and what happens like it is not to help mother, but he keeps on cleaning even the washed utensils and like, and at that time, it doesn't strike him that, okay, I have cleaned the utensils, now let me do some other work. So he, he doesn't have that realization. That, okay, there is some other work which is pending and let me do that and let me help mother or brother or anything. So, he would keep on doing like, you know, just cleaning the utensils which are already clean or clean the cupboards or the shelves which are already clean. And he is a very foodie. So, he is interested in eating a lot of junk food, playing with cats and watching TV. He loves animals and cats and he has 12 cats at his home. So he brings them up with love and if anyone hits them, then he gets very angry. He talks otherwise very nicely with the animals, then humans. That is what is the mother's observation and mother's say. So if we uh, see the look of this patient, no, then he looked very different. Because uh, when he came to clinic, he came with his younger brother, right? So the younger brother was like very smart and, you know, had come in his... Uh, uh, with a good height body and he was wearing a t-shirt and jeans and quite good uh, pre presentation. Whereas this patient, he was like, you know, short, stout and quite obese. And um, he was wearing a, a half sleeve loose shirt. And what I observed was that his size of his head was smaller and his body was like, you know, the trunk part of his body, it was quite huge. So that is why he was looking very different. At the same time, he was also looking a little imbecile and idiotic also. Who was talking very less and he wasn't smart at all. Now to prescribe into this patient, when I was thinking about it, and initially what had happened is that I had given him Elevina, I gave him Baraita Carb and I also gave him uh, uh, Medorena. But there was no change in him. And that was the time I called mother and tried to retake the case. And then whatever information I got and I was again sat down to understand what are the characteristics in him. And what I understood, first thing which I thought was he, he is like, you know, a very childish behavior that he has. See, um, usually what we see in the clinic that usually the patients are, the younger ones are brought by the elder ones. Whereas in this case, or the younger ones just accompany the elder ones. Whereas here what had happened was that the younger brother brought this patient because this patient's mental IQ level or intellectual level was far younger than what his age was. And whatever activities he was doing, you know, was like, you know, just what we saw were quite basic. Just he's interested into eating, sleeping and watching TV and like, you know, he was just like a childish uh, uh, which was behavior which was seen. So, the first rubric which I took was the childish behavior. And how his mother said that he is really troubling her a lot. And he is obstinate. He is disobedient. He does only what he wants to do. So, that is why the second rubric I thought of was behavior problems in children. He is also idiotic and imbecile that we already saw. And the monomania, he had that monomania. Monomania is for doing just one single thing repeatedly. 
and that is what this patient was doing just cleaning of the utensils again and again the cleaning even the washed utensils you know so that is why that monomania was some a little bit of ocd type of symptom that this patient had was uh, that came to my mind which i found was very characteristic Another thing which I took was the love for animals because he loved the cats very much and at least he played with them and took care of these cats. One more thing which struck me very much was that the body of this patient has grown but the mind has not. If you see then his head was a small and his trunk was very big. So the body grows and mind does not. That is what was the thing which I found very characteristic in him. Another was primitive thing. You know, he, the, whatever he was doing, his actions were very primitive, very basic. Just eating, sleeping, watching TV and enjoying. That is all. He didn't regret even losing his job. He didn't even wanted to rejoin the job or go and search for another thing. There were no sense of duty, responsibility. Nothing was there in uh, seen in this patient. So he seemed very primitive. Uh, and he had some foolish behaviors also like you know uh, which was seen in him so the remedy which i thought about in his case was bufurana and if we see now then the bufurana is prepared from this toad which is a very 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 primitive animal and if you see the size of the head of this uh, toad it is a very small head he, the toad has and the, see the size of the trunk and the body which is quite disproportionate to the head. So head is very small and the body is very large which was exactly similar in our patient also. His head was smaller and body was very huge. So after I started with the Pufurana, before that as I said I had given him few remedies but there was no much good response in him. Uh, even the patient was continuously uh, having two dialysis per week in a very good hospital set up in Mumbai still and a homeopathic treatment still his uh, creatinine was fluctuating and going up and up and he was not getting better but it was only after I gave him the before what happened was that his creatinine was stabilized when I gave him before that time his creatinine was 8.6 but it gradually started decreasing here onwards like you know it went to, it decreased to 7.5, 6.7, 5.52 and 5.48 last. He is still under the treatment and uh, his skin complaint also got better. His swelling of the legs also was better. His disobedience and the, his anger was also has come under little control. So he is still under the treatment but because there was a very good positive change and that is why I thought of sharing this case with you. Now, the second case that I am going to share, it is a case of a 13-year-old male uh, male patient. Now, this child is very poor in his academics and he has no desire to study, no concentration. His result is very poor. He fails in his exams and that is why his mother brought him for the uh, treatment. But along with his poor academics, the mother has observed something very ajeeb, something very unusual and different type of thing in the patient and what she observed is that he is doing some uh, some unusual activities uh, uh, the patient so what is he doing is he just runs or he just walks and he just jumps so uh, whenever they are sitting he's sitting for a, uh, doing his homework or something and the mother is also sitting nearby what happens is he suddenly gets up he goes into the kitchen and he walks and he walks and meaning literally like you know walks from one wall to another walks very rapidly just like a jumps or runs into that uh, kitchen and mother is very surprised that what is he doing why did he wake up from here and he goes there and then uh, he comes so mother is meaning uh, has a question that if he wants to jump why is not he not jumping here in front of me why is he why he has to go inside the kitchen and jump there or run there or walk there but this mother is observing even repeatedly it's not only once like repeatedly mother has observed this so uh, mother was complaining that what is happening to him and why why is he doing all that and another thing is like he used to move his neck and he used to like you know in all this 
involuntary there are involuntary movements of his neck all sometimes also of his hands and mother another complaint mother said is that he rubs his body and most of the time like he is smiling and that smiling is like something very silly smiling smiles to his own self or while running and while walking also there is a smile and while walking on the road also there is a smile and at the same time he is very absorbed in his own self when he is doing all those activities like he doesn't realize what is going on around him also few things mother added was that in the mobile this patient is busy only seeing the uh, cricket and listening to the songs nothing else like mother is surprised that he is 13 years and if you give a mobile in his hand like nowadays even the small children of 6 and 7 years also if you give a mobile they will go to so many apps they will do lot of creative things into that mobile whereas this patient is not doing anything else just watching cricket and listening songs that, that is all nothing else so also he has no control over himself no control over his anger and he is just like in you know, no control over his eating also that during covid mother said in less than one month's time he come like he finished one kg of almonds completely and similar to that there were few other things which are there kept in the kitchen he will just keep up, go and eat it and mother would suddenly realize that oh that is over so he has no control over his eating also and he is always smiling in a way that people notice that and people ask you know ki, okay has he gone insane people ask to his mother what is happening why is he smiling like this and he has another very bad habit of paying attention to wrong things and bad things attracts him very much so if there is any quarrel which is going on on the roads or anywhere uh, then he will just stand there and you know he will keep on listening and keep on watching and he will get engrossed into it so uh, that was another thing and he does not take up any responsibility so mother is also feeling that he is 13 year old but we cannot leave the house on him even if like we want to go out for say one hour or two hours also because mother feels that he is he does not have that much attention and understanding about you know things of the house also so she cannot leave it on to that uh, patient and she cannot go out also he is always late for his school and tuitions he does not have that responsibility that i have to wake up fast i have to reach his school at the in time so he takes a lot of time uh, in uh, uh, brushing his teeth in taking bath etc and his time unnecessarily gets wasted and he is almost always late for his school and tuitions so with all this data friends what i thought what was coming to my in mind what was very important is now we need to see what is most pathological in this case and what is that which we need to treat and for which we need to find the uh, perfect similar rubric or the similar matching in our materia medica so about his involuntary motions involuntary gestures that we saw in him was something very uh, unusual and the pathological that is what I felt so uh, in that what mother was saying that he doesn't like if he gets that impulse to walk what he does is he just gets up and he goes into the kitchen and he just pacing around and uh, walking around in the kitchen when when he's alone over there in the kitchen where there is nobody that time so the rubric that came to my mind was company aversion to desire for solitude to practice masturbation. Now here the masturbation is taken in a metaphorical way. Like this is some activity that the, it is a masturbation. What is masturbation? It is a self gratification, right? So here also when the patient is going inside the kitchen and like he's just pacing around from here, one, uh, one wall to another, one end to another in the kitchen. Like, you know, he wants, he gets that impulse and he is finding some pleasure in doing that. And he wants to have some solitude to do that. That is why he goes away from the company. So that is how I took this rubric. Also, this child is also very childish. And so the childish behavior, the body grows and only the body grows, not the mind. 
So again, we saw in him also the patient said, mother said, he is 13, but I cannot leave any, uh, I cannot leave my house onto him. He does not have a responsibility of understanding of, you know, going to school and tuition in time, waking up and taking, doing things in time. So uh, that is why, again, we see the traits of childish behavior in him. Also the foolish behavior, laughing silly, laughing over serious matters was very evidently seen in this case. And the poor intellect, the loss of concentration, failing again and again in the school. And he had that Im morbid impulse to run. So when I uh, took all this as a totality, the remedy which came up again was Buforana. And I gave him Buforana. And friends, you won't believe the first week itself after giving Bufo, when he came to the his look, meaning had changed. I felt that he had really matured, you know, that immature, childish look which was there on him when I prescribed Bufo. In the first week itself, that look had changed. And gradually, over a period of time, like his neck movements has stopped, his walking and running had stopped. His bashful and silly smiling things also stopped and he grew in maturity. He also became more responsible. He became responsible towards his studies. His academics improved, results improved. He used to wake up in time and used to go to school and tuitions also very much in time. And his masturbation also reduced. So, uh, friends, uh, just a little bit about the Buforana is that Buforana is prepared from a poisonous secretion of a little gland along the back of the toad's neck. Now, the Buforana is a medicine. If whenever we want to prescribe that, there are few things which are very important in him because the toad it is prepared from the toad, which is a very primitive creature. So it is not an animal. Uh, it is not an evolved animal. So the uh, the characteristics or features that we see in the patient also, they are very much primitive. They are very much animalistic. And they are very much like, you know, uh, the childish type of things which is seen. And uh, uh, the animalistic features in which the intellect is not developed. And they just feel like, you know, having the urges which are also of the primitive and animalistic uh, level, which are just of like, you know, eating, sleeping, mating, all this type. So, a uh, few other cases in which I have prescribed uh, the BUFO is like, you know, the cases of cerebral palsy, cases of mental retarded children or mentally challenged children. These are the type of uh, cases in which we can prescribe uh, BUFO. So, with this, uh, thank you very much, friends. But uh, we will go further into the details of the Materia Medica and the differential uh, remedies because in Bufo also, I, had, I myself had given Baraita Kaab. Baraita Kaab and Hyosimus are the two remedies which come very much close to it. So uh, we, I will invite Dr. Aditi and uh, let Aditi throw some light on to the more of the Materia Medica and some details of Bufo. Yes, Aditi? Yeah. Thank you, Shobha. And uh, yeah, so friends, uh, now we'll go to the Materia Medica of uh, Buforana. And uh, uh, as Shobha described, so the this uh, Buforana medicine is uh, prepared from the poisonous gland of the toad skin of uh, neck skin. It's a very syphilitic remedy. Uh, the pro uh, predominant miasm is uh, syphilitic. Uh, uh, we see a lot of premature senility uh, in terms of their physical uh, features as well as their mentals. Uh, we see a lot of premature senility in them. Uh, and uh, what we have seen in before Rana, the main sphere of action, the uh, organs covered are CNS system, skin and connective tissues and genitourinary system. Uh, uh, there is, uh, in CNS, we see a lot of these epilepsies and convulsions and spasms, Parkinson's, paralysis, chorea. Then skin and connective tissues, we see carbuncles, ulcerations, lymphangitis, ulcerations of the glands, cancer of the bones, then paranochia and uh, similar uh, infections and a lot of sepsis also and in genitourinary system, impotency and uh, masturbations. 
Now, uh, appearance when we uh, talk about uh, bufo patients, uh, they, they have thick lips uh, and their mouth generally is open and then tongue protrudes from the mouth. They have a very oily skin. The discharges are very fitted and offensive. Uh, they, uh, gen uh, cra crack in the center of the tongue is seen in many patients. They are generally obese. Their head is small and the body is very large and they craves sweet. Uh, now, uh, Bufo runner's main sphere of action is seen in the sexual sphere, genitourinary system, and uh, it affects the low, lowest form of the passion. So it is more seen, of course, the genitourinary system, but through mind. You know, it arouses the lowest passion. A lot of masturbation is seen. They, they seek solitude to perform masturbation. Uh, uh, there's uncontrollable sexual desires. And it is driven by their hormones. And they are slaves of their desires. Total perversions, uncontrollable things. And they desire for intoxicating drinks. Very shameless. They, can, they have no, ins uh, very instinctual. Uh, if some desires have come, they have to instantly gratify it, satisfy it, and shamelessness. So, and the primal needs are seen in them, uh, like food, sex, and sleep. Then they were feeble minded, childish, very uh, lack of maturity, foolish egotism in their talks. When if they, even if they are talking, uh, we see a kind of haughtiness or ego. But you you immediately make out that it is not age appropriate. Then idiocy, imbecility, then depravity due to bad inheritance. Uh, uh, they because they lack totally in morals and uh, there is uh, no sense of morals or uh, uh, uncontrollable desires and all and that leads to uh, that eventually leads to this depravity, immoral conducts, total lack of values. They are very corrupt, evilous, pervert, obscene, unethical. Uh, these are these are the types we see in Euphorana. Very uncontrolled anger. Anger is uh, noticed when they, they feel they are misunderstood. But because of their own uh, uh, intelligence lacking, they, uh, they, they themselves think that they are, uh, they, uh, the people are not understanding him, but it is actually other way around and it, it makes them very angry. And when they are angry, it is aggression, lot of rage, violence. They bite, they throw things, very destructive type of people. They need instant gratifications, uncontrolled emotions. And uh, then this, so because of all this, we see a lot of behavioral issues. Uh, they are complaining, lamenting, deceitful, very restless. We, we saw in Shobha's case, uh, walking up and down, pacing up and down very fearful, indolent and aversion to work. Even in first case of Shobha, the patient didn't want to go for any work. He was happy in himself. We see a lot of monomanias and actions. Seem, uh, repeatedly, one kind of action is continuously repeated without any, uh, any intention or uh, uh, so kind of OCD uh, is noticed in uh, these this, uh, patients. They are obsessed with one particular activity only. Also, there are a lot of uh, gratification through senses. So uh, mainly it is uh, in Materia Medica, the description is about masturbation. But if we take it in a larger sense, it is all gratification, seeking pleasure through all five senses. Be it touch, visual, auditory, taste, olfactory or any. So this is what we uh, see in view for. Then uh, uh, the other features are like epilepsy and convulsions and all, which which uh, which uh, the ailment from the, these epilepsy and convulsions is seen in fright and rage. Uh, even it is like seen that even uh, uh, nursing children get uh, spasms and convulsions if the mother is having fits of rage or a, a mother has gone through a severe uh, fright. Auras are uh, auras of convulsions is morely, uh, more, mostly seen uh, like sparks uh, before the eyes and also uh, naturally genitals, uh, uterus and all. And there are uh, there are observed cases of numbness before convulsion begins. Uh, then convulsions are generally coming in deep sleep. 
and they are not generally awakened uh, uh, they remain in the sleep only the uh, and once they wake up they wake up with violent headache after uh, epileptic attack status epilepticus partial seizures so we see all kind of uh, forms of epilepsy grand mal petit mal all even just uh, 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 a kind of petit mal epilepsy where you just see facial grimaces as if they are straining but actually it is a epilepsy and the spasms are also due to septic uh, conditions of the body and sepsis and other physicals are like uh, uh, bone pains brittle bones and uh, paralysis dropsy uh, uh, and flushing and ablations so friends we saw all this materia medica so nicely covered in shobha's both cases and i think it can uh, i mean this bufo picture can get very well engraved in our mind through these cases uh, so now i'll invite kushala to uh, 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 differentiate the remedies yes thank you aditi yeah So hello friends, let's differentiate Bufo, Rana, Baraita Carp and Hyosamus because they come in very close differentiation. Now, as we know, Bufo falls in the animal kingdom. It's an amphibian, while Baraita is a mineral, which as per the mineral chart, it belongs to the row six, that is the king series, but very early in column two. At the same time, hyosimus in the plant chart belongs to subclass 6, but it belongs to the boom stage and the Solenelsae family. So if we look into the core features, Bufo being an amphibian, you know, it has got this duality. It can be in and out. It can be in the water as well as on the earth. So there are two aspects. Whenever there's any threat, they go into the safe haven of water. And when they feel that they can come out, they come to the land. But so in evolution, they are very, very primitive. They fall in the column two of the animal chart. They're extremely primitive in evolution. So their needs are also very eid oriented. It's all to do with instant gratification where I want something, I want to eat this food and I want to be gratified immediately. Same to do with sex as well as sleep because they cannot think more than food, sex, sleep. Very, very, very basic. At the same time, they are very low minded. They are small minded. It's that can be seen in the idiocy in them, the stupidity in them, as well as they have no sense of morality because they, for them, the difference of right and wrong is just not there. And it's the arousal of the lowest passion. I mean, for you, your instincts are so strong on sex that you will want to have an uncontrollable sexual satisfaction no matter where you are, what you're doing. So, but in Baraita, what you'll see is Baraita, though he falls in the King series, in the row of leaders, but he's being in column two, is somebody who knows that he needs to take responsibility, but he doesn't have the capacity. So he's a very handicapped person. He's dependent on others because he's very simple. He doesn't have the mind or the intellect to handle any form of complexities. While Hyosimus, his main core is being in the Solanaceae, he has a lot of fear of being attacked because he belongs to that leader, the king series. So you have the fear that you will be injured by your surroundings. You'll be, you are, you'll be betrayed. You'll be attacked. You'll be threatened. But the womb aspect about you doesn't have that much strength to fight all this threat. In appearance, Bufo is very, very immature, very childish. And you can see the difference that the man looks big. He's large, as in Dr. Shobha's case, but his head is small. And in the small head, there's a very small intellect too. While Baraita is dwarfish in the literal sense. 
he's dwarfish physically, he's dwarfish mentally, even there is a delayed development of his specific organs like genitalia. And you can see that on his face, you see a very vacant look. They lack that brilliance in them because they just can't handle things. While Hyosimus will be, you know, very loud, excited, very animated. And you'll find that, you know, he's asking foolish questions. This is his cover up for the feeling of, you know, the threat or the betrayal. In Bufo, you'll see being so instinctual and being so Eid oriented, you want instant gratification. So there's an un stoppable sex drive so you see a lot of you know cases where like in these rapists or call girls or prostitute you can't just help you see a lot of um, instances where these are such type of people who do not have a control over their sex drive and they're totally perverted in that sense there's no sense of you know i shouldn't be doing this here I shouldn't be having uh, sex like this with anybody and everybody. And uh, you can even masturbate in public because you are handling genitals. Because you, for you, that sex is something which you just can't help it. You are so much low in your mind, low in your passion. You're so primitive, so instinctual that everything is unstoppable and uncontrollable and to an excess. While in Baraita Kaab, you will not see such overt uh, sexual activity. While Hyosimus, when they reach a point in their unconscious which breaks out, where the instincts breaks out, the cover-up is opened up, then they go into sexual erotic mania, where they are so shameless. They'll expose their person, they'll be singing and cursing and talking so much about sexual subjects. Morals in Bufo is totally perverted. There's no sense of morality at all. He can say and do things anywhere and everywhere. While Baraita, his morals are not lost. Hyosimus, when his unconscious reveals and he goes into that stage of insanity, you'll find that his morals are totally lost. In behavior-wise, you'll see Bufo very imbecile he looks retarded but he's very you know because the toad has poison glands and he has to defend himself you you see that angry eccentric aspects of from him and because he's so childish immature idiotic to look imbecile people make fun of him he's not the protected child so people can bully him make fun of him because of which he can be that animal instinct of him brings that deceit in him he can deceive people like there was an instance where dr bitun cast has mentioned of a child because he's bullied by his friends he you know he manages to get the question paper uh, from the the class and gives the children wrong question papers or distributes the wrong question papers to his friends so that they you know they fail so this type of animal quality of deceit the sexuality is seen in bufo and they're very shameless i mean where sex is concerned it's like you know you can just shamelessly utter things and say things and do things well baraita is timid he's a protected child he's a incapable child he has he's he's a delusion box on his knees i mean there's so much of smallness in him so he's very dependent and he's a protected child so what he wants is he will cling to the familiar people and the familiar surroundings he'll cling to his mother because that's where he finds his safety because he is not able to comprehend things there's a basic lack of intellect a basic lack of brilliance in him he's incapable so he's incapable of handling anything which is beyond simple or anything which is little complex that itself is too much for him. While Hyosanus feels so much betrayed and so much threatened, so he gets extremely suspicious and extremely mistrustful. And to for that, what he will do is, uh, because he's feeling all this, he will give up a very attractive behavior because he's scared that the person opposite 
will injure him. So he will show a very attractive behavior because he wants to keep that person. He doesn't want to lose at the same time. He has a fear that the person opposite might poison him or injure him. So he's paranoid about that. There's a fear of being poisoned and he is very obsessed with certain ideas over simple things. Miasmatically, you will see that there's a lot of, uh, you know, psychosyphilitic in Bufo as well as Hyosimus, while Barita is more psychotic. So these three remedies definitely come in close differentiation. Friends, if you all would like to add anything, please do. Dr. Kushala has differentiated the medicines very well. And especially kingdom-wise also, if you see, it becomes very easy to differentiate the remedies. One thing only which I wanted to point out is the bad inheritance they have written and the moral depravity. So syphilitic uh, trait in the past history or family history should be explored. So which gives rise to this type of, you know, moral corruption. Depravity is corruption or polluted mind. So which doesn't have any morals like uh, Kushala described. There is There are no moral values. So guys, if you see a baraita like child with high, sexual, high sexuality and aggression, even the anger, anger you have to see, the type of anger higher Bufo has, which is animalistic. So if you have a baraita child with these characteristics, always think of Bufo. Don't wait for, you know, uh, also exploring more of masturbation or sexuality because masturbation and sexuality extended meaning can be indulging in anything which gives them pleasure. And one more thing is Bufo is self-absorbed. Like Shobha also said, when the mother was describing or brother was describing, he did not have any interest or he was not reacting to it. So they are very much self-absorbed, whereas Baraita Kaab will always feel inferior. That is why that bashfulness comes up. They are very shy, timid, inferiority complex, and they are very bashful. Whereas Hyosimus has high energy, it has affectation. So you will get a lot of antiques and a lot of uh, affectation. Uh, and uh, they act like actors. So they have gestures with, uh, like actors. So presentation is totally different in Hyosimus. So if anybody wants to add anything or we conclude the session. I think we have done it well. Yes. So both the cases of Bufos are very beautiful and which they show different shades and different stage of development. One person is very much developed, like uh, age is 30 plus and the other child is, you know, 13. So you can see both the shades with very much, you know, a different focus and different pathology. So it completes the picture. Do watch our videos, like, share and subscribe and please give us feedback on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.